Model steam engines for beginners. This is part 15. Essential information about steam engine slide valves. These days my main hobby and part time business is working on miniature steam engines. And I do find that there is one problem with steam engines that a lot of people do not understand and that is the slide valve. This slide valve complete with a steam chest is from a Stuart 10V steam engine. Originally the builder just fitted the rough casting as the slide valve. I've cleaned up the face but it's still not the right size. Problem number one. The slide valve is a very tight fit on the crossbar and this is no good at all. It is the pressure of steam that holds the slide valve onto the port face and if it's stuck on the crossbar often it will not make contact with the port face so the steam or compressed air or whatever you're using just blows to exhaust. This is the most common problem. I would say 7 out of 10 times when I look at a steam engine that's not working properly this is usually the main problem. Problem number 2. The slide valve's dimensions do not match the ports. In this clip I've turned the slide valve around, so now it's actually a little bit on the short side. So what I need to do is machine away some of the material from each end of the slide valve in its normal position so that it clears the ports at both ends. Here's an extract from a video where I was actually making a slide valve and there are some very useful and relevant points in it. The position of the machine recess in the slide valve is critical and must match the cylinder exactly. If you're not sure about this and you want to have a second opinion, have a look at your cylinder ports. Here's the port face of the cylinder and I'm just giving it a quick check with the ruler. It's not perfect, but it's within dimension. If the slide valve recess is too big, like it is on the original valve, the engine can never work. This clip shows the port layout on a Stuart 10V steam engine. The centre one is the exhaust port. The top port on the port face admits steam to the cylinder and then allows it to be carried away to exhaust after it's done its work. And the bottom port does exactly the same but at the other side of the piston. It's important to understand that these are double acting cylinders. The piston is forced upwards in the cylinder by steam being admitted underneath it and then forced back down the cylinder at the other end by the steam being admitted on top of it. And this admission and exhaust is all controlled by the slide valve. And here we have a Stuart 10V slide valve, but unfortunately this one was not machined at all. The rough casting was just put inside the steam chest. The engine ran, but not very well. The previous clips in this video show the slide valve once I'd cleaned up the front face of it. I'm now going to modify the rear part of it. This is a very good quality gunmetal casting. And that's possibly what fools people into thinking it's the finished item. Apart from cleaning up the front of it, I now need to use a file to create a bit of clearance between the slot in the valve at the rear and the bar that drives it up and down inside the steam chest. Because the valve is oversized, I'm going to turn it round just to see if it works, because sometimes this is successful. And that's why it would appear that I'm filing the wrong part of the valve, which indeed I am. I'm using a very fine, flat needle file for this job. You can see some very rough file marks on the other upright. But this is no good. The valve needs to be a nice loose fit on the crossbar, without any sort of roughness to stop it from moving and being held against the port face by the pressure of the steam. In this clip you can see that the valve is now fitted the other way around. When it was fitted in the original position, it was impossible to get the timing anywhere near. It was very retarded at each end of the stroke. But because I've put the valve in the other way round, it's now quite the opposite. And the slide valve, instead of admitting the steam or air late, is now admitting it a little bit early. So this is no good. I need to actually machine the valve to the correct length. Here I'm refitting the valve the right way round. And what I've done is machined a tiny bit off each end of the valve. So now it should be the right size. I don't have a drawing for this engine, I just measured the ports and ground a little bit off the valve to make the slide valve the correct size so that it admits and exhausts the steam at exactly the right point as it passes over the steam ports. In this clip, with the eccentric rod refitted to the valve fork and the eccentric timing set to exactly 90 degrees to the crank pin, 
I can move the valve back and forth by rotating the flywheel to see when the valve is opening and closing at each end of the stroke. Further adjustments to the position of the valve are made by removing the eccentric rod and rotating the valve fork and then refitting the eccentric rod etc etc until you get it right. That's one side done. The valve nearest the flywheel is the correct length. Time to test it. Followed by testing the side that I haven't modified. I can both hear and feel the difference between the two cylinders now. There wasn't as much power coming from this side of the engine, but now I've modified this valve as well, have a listen to the difference. Now that the slide valves in each of the valve chests are identical in size, the power output from both of the cylinders is about the same. The next part of the job is setting the eccentric. Very shortly I will be fitting reversing gear to this Stuart 10V and there will be plenty of opportunities to see me obsessively tweaking the eccentric sheaves position on the crankshaft. And anticipating this I'm going to end the video by showing you a steam engine I worked on quite a long time ago and you'll be able to see and hear the difference once I adjusted the eccentric sheave to make this old steam engine run almost perfectly. In this video I've tried to show you quite a lot of the problems that are very common with miniature steam engines and I'm going to conclude by saying as always stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Here's the story so far, I'm making minute adjustments to the position of the eccentric sheave which is machined into the flywheel, so I'm just rotating the flywheel to adjust the timing and it's getting better. If I lift the engine off the soundboard that's on my workbench and then put a piece of Scotch-Brite underneath it, it runs fairly quietly. But no, I think I can get it better than that. You can imagine how time consuming this job can be when you have to take off the eccentric strap every time you want to adjust the position of the eccentric sheave. And that's why I'm using this engine to demonstrate the principle. After trying it a few times I've come to the conclusion that this is the correct position. As the slide valve admits the air to the cylinders this is happening just before the piston rod reaches the end of its travel. I'm now going to leave this setting as it is because this is the best setting that I've found. I'm going to finish the video with the engine running. Sometimes it's in real time, sometimes it's in slow motion and there is a before and after clip at the end. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.